Does the research involve students? And if so, how can they get involved? Absolutely. We love to involve undergraduates in our research. We get them involved in data collection. We often take them out into the field. And we have projects right now in the Hazard Reduction and Recovery Center that involve students. And we have projects in construction science, our Department of Construction Science, that involve students as well. At the graduate level, although many of our programs are professional programs, we like to introduce our graduate students to research at the master's level and hopefully entice them to stay with us for PhDs. Howdy, and welcome to another episode of Future Built. I'm Chelsea Reber, and today I'm visiting with Dr. Shannon Van Zant, the former Dean of Research in the School of Architecture. The School of Architecture does innovative and impactful research every day. You can learn more at arch.tamu.edu. And make sure to stick around until the end of the episode to learn how you can enter to win an iPad. Dr. Van Zant, thank you for joining me today. Sure, glad so to be here. tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with the School of Architecture. Sure. Well, well, I am twice an Aggie, so I got involved in the School of Architecture back in the early 1990s. We won't be too specific <laughs> about that, but um, I have a degree from the Environmental Design Program as well as a Master's in Urban Planning from A&M, and I went away to do my PhD, and then I had an opportunity to come back and join the faculty, which I did in 2005, and I've been here ever since. How does the School of Architecture approach research differently than other universities? Well, I think first it's important to recognize that it, in the, the A&M landscape, we're a small school. Um, we're not, we don't do the kind of research that engineering or ag do, but we are still the largest school of architecture in the country. And we are among the, the top 10, maybe even top five, in terms of research productivity, in terms of citations and grants and publications. Tell us about some of the research being done right now that really excites you. There's a lot of exciting things going on, and I think what I like best about the kind of research that we do is that it's very applied. It's trying to solve real problems that are happening in our disciplines of architecture, construction management, urban planning, and landscape architecture. Uh, we're doing things like looking at whether a bus rapid transit system increases walking and an active living in the city of El Paso. We're looking at how communities recover from disasters across the country. Um, primarily along the Gulf Coast. Um, we're looking at, we, it, folks in our construction science and architecture departments are using augmented reality and virtual reality to, to make training for construction workers safer um, so that we have fewer accidents on construction sites. Uh, there's all kinds of cool stuff being done. It sounds like things that a human being could run into any day. Absolutely, I think that's usually what I hear when I talk about what, what we do here is that, man, that stuff really makes a difference and it's stuff that people understand. You know, we're not, we're not working with cells and we're not working with uh, agriculture, but we're doing things that people might, may actually experience. Because of that, do some of the research studies take less time than maybe a different research study like working with cells or you know kind of in the medical yeah. field things like that perhaps I mean it varies okay. you know we don't we're, we're not working in labs I think that's a big difference but we are working in communities and so sometimes those things can take years uh, we had a study it was actually my study um, that was a three-year study of community recovery after a hurricane um, but we also may be doing things that uh, we can do just in our offices on computers visualizing data Data, modeling things both spatially and temporally um, and so those kinds of things can be quicker. Does the research involve students and if so how can they get involved? Absolutely we love to involve undergraduates in our research we get them involved in data collection we often take them out into the field and we have projects right now in the hazard reduction and recovery center that involve students and we have uh, pro projects in construction science our department of construction science that involves students as well. At the graduate level, although many of our programs are professional programs, we like to introduce our graduate students to research at the master's level and hopefully uh, entice them to stay with us for PhDs. And our PhD students are involved in leading research projects and our graduates have gone on to pretty high level jobs. We actually have a student in the White House right now who, he's a faculty member at the University of Maryland, but he's uh, spending a year as a senior advisor on
climate justice, and that's a great example. Yeah, well, that kind of leads me to my next question, and how does research influence student career paths? Sure. I think any student that gets involved in research is going to gain some skills that give them an advantage in the workplace. Uh, working with data, visualizing data, and communicating science results are important in a lot of different industries, not just the ones they're training for, but it expands their ability to work in other areas. Uh, so we really, we encourage it, and a lot of our students may take that path, or they're going to get better, better jobs in their chosen discipline. Are you ready to take your career to the next level? Apply for our graduate programs at arch.tamu.edu. Dr. Van Zant, with AI being a hot topic, how is the School of Architecture taking AI into account for the future of development? Sure, that's a great question. Um, we have some, a lot of our newer faculty are using AI, and, and we use it in a way that's called generative AI, where we're using AI as a design tool. Um, and that brings up a lot of questions. It's We're seeing, even with the writer's strike right now, that there's a lot of questions about who owns content generated by AI and what is it replacing and I think the question is can it replace designers is a question that we're going to have to grapple with and I think we also want to look at the the quality of the designs that are produced by AI and whether they actually meet the needs of the end users. You mentioned some of the faculty members are using AI. Can you give me some examples of how they're using AI specifically? Sure, one of the ways that we're using AI is in creating digital twins. A digital twin is a computer simulation of the built environment. And it can be everything from a neighborhood to a city, maybe even a campus, which is actually something we'd like to do, is to do a digital twin of A&M's campus. And that allows us to simulate what actions we might take and see their consequences without actually having to, to do it in real life. So it's safer, it's cheaper, it's faster. Um, it's a great way to uh, try things out before we have to invest in them. And of course, what we do in architecture and the, in the School of Architecture is, is build things. And so having a digital twin in Galveston, for example, allows residents to see how coastal surge might flood their homes and businesses. How does the school's research affect local communities in Texas? That's something we really take a lot of pride in, or at least I do. Um, we have a program called Texas Target Communities that is an outreach arm, and we do a lot of work with communities to, to ask them what their needs are. And uh, as researchers, sometimes we think we know what communities need, but engaged research really allows the community to tell us what they need. And that allows us to develop research projects that actually meet the needs of communities, and we partner with them. And we call that engaged research and it's something that we do particularly well and that we like to partner with other colleges and schools across campus to do. Does the research done here have an even larger impact? I'm talking global. Yes, absolutely. Um, we see the technologies being uh, created and developed here and to having an important role in, in industry. For example, our construction science researchers do a lot of safety research, and so they're making it safer um, for people to operate heavy equipment, for example, um, to be able to train to do that without actually being in the field, which keeps them safer. We also are influencing policy at the highest levels, um, particularly in the hazard and disaster area where we're helping to educate state and federal legislators about how the policies uh, affect particular vulnerable communities, for example, and how we can get funding to those communities more quickly and more effectively after a disaster. Can you expound on how the research that you do here is impacting the industry? Sure. I think uh, we see the, the work that we're doing here be a adopted by industry. We, we actually partner with industry in some cases um, to develop training for people working on construction sites so that they can learn how to operate machinery safely before they go into the field. Um, we see things like helping communities to develop land use plans that are more responsive to climate change. Uh, that's been adopted across the country by groups like the American Planning Association and the National Institutes for Standards and Technology. Uh, we see 
some uh, augmented reality and virtual reality used to develop um, ways of understanding how to install things like panels or things that are too large for one person to handle uh, using Legos of all things and and so it, it's 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 neat to watch um, but it also has a, an impact on how people are understanding how buildings go together and, and how they can um, contribute to that it sounds like a lot of the research is very hands-on Absolutely. I think that's one of the neat things about it. It's very hands-on. You can walk around this building and, and see these projects happening, seeing students, see students putting things together, building, you know, three-dimensional objects out of uh, cross-laminated timber. Um, we take a lot of students into communities, into the field, to teach them how to use GPS units, teach them how to assess the quality of their own infrastructure, for example, um, doing what we would call citizen science. And we've done that a lot with not only our students, but but high school students in, in Houston neighborhoods and and in coastal communities, to because they're excited about this stuff. And we hope, obviously, that that attracts them to Texas a and m and and brings them to us later in their life but it's also having a, an immediate and direct impact on their communities can you tell me a little bit more about the research being done specifically in the construction science program sure uh, i think one of the neatest things particularly from my perspective as a as a housing person is we have a young researcher in construction science who's developing new methods of con of making concrete out of waste and so the, the concrete blocks that she creates are made from, from fibers that have been cast off from different processes. So they're, they're lighter, they're cheaper, and they don't, they don't lead to waste. And so she's very interested in how that might contribute to being able to build more affordable housing, which I think is great. Uh, as another example of materials research, we have another young researcher out of the Department of Architecture who uses cross-laminated timber as a, as a construction material and that's something we have a lot of here in Texas and so it's it's a local material it's more sustainable it has a much smaller carbon footprint and he's also exploring ways with his design students on how to use it in more affordable housing and even in multi-story buildings can you tell us a little bit more about research that's going on right now that really excites you in construction, they get to use all of the neat toys. So there's a lot of faculty who are using augmented reality and virtual reality um, to, to model different construction systems, um, but also to help make uh, identification of, of things easier. We have we have a faculty member who uses drones to to basically look at stop signs as a way of knowing how much flooding is, is taking place in a community. And I know that sounds really strange, <laughs> but what he does we know how tall stop signs are. And so if we can see the stop sign from from photographs that are being taken after a disaster, we can get a sense, pretty accurate sense of how how deep the water is. And that's important for a number of reasons, um, but particularly to to model damage and to, to know and to even model the, the expense. We often hear after a disaster, you know, the millions or billions of dollars that it costs. And those are estimates, but they're they're sometimes not very good estimates. And so we're seeing that some of the faculty research is leading to better estimates of those kinds of things. What makes research at the School of Architecture unique, especially in comparison to other institutions? I think one of the things that I particularly like about our school is that it is a kind of a microcosm of the how the built environment is created. So with our three departments, we have architecture, landscape architecture, urban planning, and construction science. And those are all the disciplines that create the built environment. And so it gives us some unique opportunities for, for research across the life cycle of a building, um, but it also gives us a chance for interdisciplinary disciplinary collaboration right here in our own school that I think many schools don't have that opportunity. So you have faculty from all disciplines working together in some of this research? We try to do that. I th a lot of our researchers are working with, e with each other within the School of Architecture, but many of us also collaborate across other colleges and schools on the university campus, particularly engineering, um, but also like geography and geosciences and the Bush School with public policy. Um, so there's lots of opportunities to use the expertise that we have here on this campus to really have some great insights about how the built environment can be made 
more cost effective, more efficient, more sustainable, and more responsive to our needs. It sounds like you have a wide variety of research going on in the School of Architecture. How did that many people with that many new ideas kind of come together in one place? That's a great question. I think the School of Architecture is generally considered a professional school. So we, we have a lot of professional programs that lead to you know, people becoming architects, people becoming urban planners, land developers, those sorts of things. And that borrows from a lot of different disciplines. So we, we have engineers, we have designers, we have a lot of social scientists, we have psychologists, all kinds of folks. And I think that really lends itself to creativity because we, we have different perspectives. We think about things differently. We use different methods. Um, but we're here to solve big problems. And, and I think that's what we do really well is we bring together those variety of perspectives on one problem. And with, with those, all of those minds thinking about something, we're sure to come up with some great solutions. You mentioned that the School of Architecture is one of the smallest at Texas A&M, but it is the largest school of architecture in the country. So how does that size benefit the research that that's going on here? Well, I think a, a lot of schools of architecture are in what we would call research one universities, top tier universities, public universities, and land grant universities. So it's not unusual to have these kinds of schools, but it's a little unusual to have the array of disciplines together in one school. Um, often you see architects in schools of art, you might see construction in engineering schools, you might see urban planning in policy schools. So you can find us all over the place but bringing people here together that focus on the built environment, um, again, makes us able to address problems um, comprehensively, and, and that, that has been a unique opportunity. How does the School of Architecture support faculty in their research and getting the funding? Sure. In, in my role as research dean, it's my job to help put teams together to go after usually federal funding is what we, we want to get. Um, as a tier one research university, we are expected to do research and we are expected to get funding from federal agencies. And sometimes that may be difficult for people in applied fields like we have here in the School of Architecture. But what we're seeing is from a lot of federal agencies is that they are requiring interdisciplinary teams and even in requiring partnerships with existing communities. And that's something that we do particularly well here in the School of Architecture because we do have a lot of different disciplines represented and we partner very well with other units on campus. And in, in doing that, we're able to really look at some of these pressing issues in society related to uh, community resilience to, to climate impacts, um, looking at lean delivery systems for construction and what to do with waste, even how to green our our cities um, to deal with heat impacts, um, but also aesthetic qualities. We have one of our researchers here is the, really the world's expert on green roofs in the western United States, where it's, it's very hard to grow things on the roof because of the heat. And we have a lot of faculty who are, are looking at heat impacts on communities, um, particularly b due to more impervious sur surfaces, more concrete basically, mm -hmm. um, which creates more runoff, but also um, absorbs and, and puts off heat and heat island effects. Um, and so we're able to pull together experts from a lot of different fields and, and have them help us address those big, big issues. The more I hear you talk, the more I realize that the research you're doing in the School of Architecture applies to everyday life. The research we do here changes the world. People experience the built environment every day, and the, the research that's being done in Texas A&M School of Architecture makes that better. Dr. Van Zant, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Follow the school at Tamu Arch School on social media everywhere.